okay next is the chemical hazard so dalam uh, legal provision kita ada factory and machinery act ni awak dah belajar dekat chapter 1 so dalam sini dia ada menceritakan berkenaan uh, act-act tentang chemical so five main aspect related to this statutory dah dah ni yang, yang termasuklah kat dalam uh, ketiga-tiga regulation ni ada mengatakan tentang this five aspect so kita ada permissible exposure limit exposure monitoring medical inspection control method and other methods such as record and penalty so semua ni ada dalam factory machinery X. So dalam factory machinery X tu dia ada regulation tertentu 1984, 1986 dan juga 1989 yang melibatkan uh, Ok next is in the occupational safety and health act So dalam sini ada beberapa regulation juga Dalam OSH juga ada beberapa regulation yang menyebut tentang chemical Pertama adalah Uh, berkenaan dengan uh, Regulation 1996 So it's about the control of major disaster caused by chemical And then regulation 1997 Supply of chemical and chemical safety data sheet So ni memang selalu kena refer Okay penting eh Ni awak sebagai student pun perlu tahu Untuk CS, CS of each chemical yang awak nak guna sebelum awak masuk lab and then uh, order 1999 is about provision of the dangerous chemicals so yang kita belajar tentang dua lah, satu tadi machinery X dan juga uh, OSH ok next is how chemical affect the health so basically chemical affect is by direct contact lah direct contact with the corrosive chemicals such as alkali or acid and then irritant chemicals cause skin to flare up cause skin allergy uh, so bila kita direct contact with the chemicals uh, this exposure can cause allergy ataupun irritant ataupun corrosive chemical pun bila kena dekat tangan kita akan jadi mercur ok this is how chemical roots of entry into human body. So macam mana cara chemical masuk ke dalam body kita. So kita ada inhalation, ingestion, absorption, injection. So inhalation maksudnya melalui hidung kita ataupun mulut lah. So breath and smoke cause us to inhale substance which enter the lungs. Substance inhaled into the lungs are readily absorbed into the blood stream so contoh apa yang berlaku kita masuk lab and then awak uh, prepare chemical such as sulfuric acid which uh, have a high uh, apa, uh, meruap dia senang meruap and then uh, bila awak buat di suhu bilik yang biasa tanpa menggunakan kebut whatsapp so apa yang berlaku awak akan terhidu dia ataupun mungkin dia akan ter pecik masuk mulut. So, itu adalah melalui inhalation. Okay, next is injection. So, injection ni um, swallowing a substance cause penetration into the bloodstream via stomach, stomach and small instant time. So, dia masuk uh, ni masuk directly kepada terus termasuk ke dalam mulut kita lah injection. Ha, ini pun macam tadi kita termasuk dalam mulut terminum ke okey ni ada kes eh masa zaman saya kerja dulu a uh, macam-macam ni dia dah lama kerja jadi dia rasa macam selamat and then the company pun tak begitu a uh, mengetatkan tentang a uh, osh ni so apa yang berlaku dia a uh, nak sukat sulfuric acid tu dengan cara dia menyedut a uh, so dia rasa macam tak ada apa-apa eh? tapi sebenarnya mungkin ada termasuk sikit kan so apa kesan sulfuric acid termasuk dekat dalam badan kita so mungkin dia adalah jadi kepada kronik lah kepada jangka masa panjang mungkin on the spot there is no acute hazard yang berlaku tapi mungkin dia boleh menyebabkan kanser ataupun penyakit-penyakit lain yang kronik kepada diri kita so itu pun 
Itu adalah melalui injection. Okay, next is the absorption. So entering the body through the skin cause substance to enter the bloodstream at a slower rate. So biasa kalau uh, absorption punya cara adalah secara slow lah sebab dia meruap ke dalam kita punya skin kan. So ini pun contoh kita uh, pegang chemical kan. Uh, macam tadi uh, nickel. Kita rasa macam tak ada apa-apa. Tapi sebenarnya orang tu dia ada allergic kepada nickel. Tak pakai glove. So itu akan berlaku absorption. Ha, ataupun acid and uh, acid and alkali pun boleh meruap dekat tangan kita kan. Ha, jadi itu pun uh, adalah melalui kaedah absorption. Okay, then the last one is injection. So, injection occur when substance are forced through this skin and as a result of compressed air or by having the skin abrupt by a penetrating object. So, injection ni mestilah ada yang dia masuk directly kepada badan kita lah melalui uh, penetrating to the uh, by penetrating object such as uh, apa injection kan satu so, kalau kita guna injection kita tak boleh share dengan orang lain sebab sebab apa sebab dia boleh mungkin uh, boleh ada jangkitan virus ataupun uh, bakteria so that's why injection pun adalah satu kaedah yang boleh menyebabkan chemical substance berpindah kepada uh, tubuh badan manusia so that's why kalau pergi klinik ke apa, uh, apa Jangan jarum semua Dia ada tempat untuk dia buang Plastik kuning tu Sebenarnya bukan setakat doktor je Chemical pun ada yang plastik kuning tu Itu dia memang khas untuk kita buang Klinikal punya uh, apa Waste lah Okay next is the dangerous situation Increase the risk exposure So, the first one is a lack of awareness on the hazardous chemicals on yang selalu berlaku. And then, leakage or accidentally spillage of chemicals. Working in the enclosed area or room with poor ventilation. Doing routine that involve chemicals. Machine, machine breakdown. Lack of safety management. So, ni semua adalah... Dangerous situation yang selalu berlaku Bukan setakat di industri Tapi juga di lab ha, Awak saya cerita di lab Atau di kelas sebab Awak belum kerja Tapi nanti bila awak kerja awak akan nampak lah ni semua. Ini yang kita perlu Hati-hati uh, sebab inilah Yang akan increase kita punya Risk exposure Okay next is the chemical safety data sheet. Okay ni yang saya cakap tadi. Student perlu tahu tentang CSDS. It is important. So before you go to the lab. Before you use some of chemicals. You need to know the CSDS. CSDS ni biasa kita dapat bila kita beli that product. Kita beli that chemical. Contoh NaOH. Sulfur acid. apa Sodium pemangganat ke. Semua dia akan bagi. Oleh company tu Kadang-kadang dia tak bagi Tapi dia boleh Dapatkan di internet ha, Biasa dekat dia punya brochure Tapi memang kebiasaannya dibagi Cuma mungkin pensyarah awak yang simpan Jadi mana awak nak dapat So boleh tengok di internet okay? CSDS ni kena tahulah ha, So dia adalah Informational paper Containing information related to Hazardous chemical Which are important in the safe use and handling of chemical at a workplace. So, dia dalam CSDS ni semua ada bagi tahu semua properties of this, that chemical, how to handle, how to throw it, how to use it. Semua ada dalam CSDS. So, that's why you need to know CSDS before you go to the lab and use the chemical or handling the chemical. So, uh, objective of uh, CSDS is the first one to understand The safety recommendation and the rational And then realize the result of failure To comply to safety requirements So kalau awak dah tengok CSDS And then there is a failure Ataupun uh, something happen So uh, basically 
uh, pensyarah ataupun OSH punya orang akan uh, take note. Maksudnya awak memang dah ikut, dah follow di CSDS. So, something happen must be, uh, must be something lah. Need to take action. Okay, so next is the OSH uh, ni, order 1999. So, dia adalah wajib order. Okay, dia sebagai order 1999. So, that's why it is important. And then, identify symptom of over exposure. So, kita boleh identify system over the exposure before we use the that chemical. And, uh, ataupun masa kita tengah buat tu, berlaku sesuatu, dekat situ pun dia ada tulis apa tindakan yang kita perlu buat untuk kita prevent and control the hazard. Okay, so it also obtain input for the formulation of strategies and recommendation in the safe use of hazardous chemicals. So, dia bagi tahu juga macam mana kita nak prepare that chemical. So, contoh macam uh, acid tu, dia boleh sampai berapa persen kita nak buat. Kita nak prepare uh, berapa concentration yang kita nak buat. So, dia bagi tahu macam mana. So, kalau macam nak guna uh, sulfuric acid, perlu menggunakan uh, kebuk whatsapp uh, macam tu. So, legal provisions, so regulation uh, 1997 uh, required supplier to prepare and provide CSDS for every hazardous chemical supply. So, biasanya memang akan disupply oleh supplier. Cuma idea siapa yang simpan dan di mana dia berada itu saja masa alah yang selalu berlaku. Okay, supplier is defined as the party supply the chemical to the user which include formulator, manufacturer, importance importers and or distributors so supplier ni tempat yang kita beli tu lah so supplier also required to review CSDS regular, regularly so sebab tu zaman saya belajar dulu nama dia adalah MSDS so, sekarang dah nama jadi CSDS ha, sebab dia ada dia perlu di review secara regular The information required must be with the objective to protect the safety and health of worker and not for use for any reason. So, information basically memang digunakan untuk safety and health of the worker ataupun pengguna. Okay, so, mandatory information in the CSDS, there are 15 types information required, so chemical product, Company identification and then composition of the ingredients and then uh, clearly identify the hazardous chemicals for the purpose of conducting hazard evaluation and then hazard identification, first aid measure, accidental release measure, handling and storage, exposure control and PPE. Physical and chemical properties, stability and reactivity, toxic, toxicology information, ecological information, disposal information, transportation, date of preparation of the CSDS and so on. So basically this is the example of the CSDS. So uh, I will upload the example or also you can find in the internet. And you can read how this CSDS function. And it is important as you all is the chemical engineering student. So you need to know this CSDS. Dengan nanti pergi LI, uh, supervisor dekat LI cakap tentang CSDS, semua perli. Apa benda CSDS ni? Okay, uh, so penting. Okay. okay, that's all for today. Thank you.